Welcome to another episode of Adventures in Movies Looks at dot, dot, dot. My name is Nathaniel Muir and I'm the movie editor at AIPT. This week I'm joined by one of the hosts of Adventures in Movies. The best one. Like... <laughs> <laughs> the one who rides bikes, is... <laughs> yes. and not 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 the pedal kind of room room. Mm, I'm a chopper man myself. Hog man. Yeah. <laughs> um, this week we're going to look at a documentary called DTF. Uh, for those of you who don't know, DTF means down to fly. So <laughs> naturally, <laughs> this documentary is about a pilot. Um, he's a widowed pilot, and he has a friend who's a documentarian. Um, the documentarian decides he's going to, his name is Christian. It's not his real name, but the name they use is Christian. Uh, the documentarian decides he's going to follow Christian as he looks for love on Tinder. Um, as the documentary progresses, however, things don't quite turn out like that. So um, this movie, uh, we'll give a spoiler warning for because it, it has some pretty crazy spoilers in it. But we're going to talk about things that... We're not going to ruin it per se, but it's going to kind of give away what happens in it. But, yeah. But, uh, I mean, there's no way you can talk about this without giving away a little bit of it. But we won't get into specific details about it. So, DTF, what expectations did you have going into this? Oh, honestly, I, had no, I, did not know, I, I didn't know what to expect. Um, like we mentioned on a lot of these dot, dot, dots, uh, we kind of go into these things blind sometimes. Right. We were flying blind, you might say. <laughs> and um, so I didn't, I had no idea. I, I kind of read the brief synopsis of a uh, guy's quest for love. He's a pilot. Um, I did not realize he was a widower. You just, is that right? Yes, he was a widower. Oh, okay. Well, that maybe adds some context to this that I did not know. Um, so I did not know what to expect. Uh, Tinder, you kind of get this like, oh, it's like uh, off a dating app. So zero expectations. I, I thought it was going to be. I honestly thought it was going to be kind of like one of these dating shows, uh, like The Bachelor or something. That makes sense. And, um, like you, I don't really read too much into the. Like, I try to go into them as blind as possible. Right. So I read a little bit of the synopsis, about half of it, and I saw pilot Tinder looking for love across the world. So I thought it would be a very lighthearted documentary. And actually it starts off very lighthearted where it's his first date and the uh, documentary, Al Bailey is his name. He's asking like people in the crowd, what do you think of Tinder? And they're joking around. That's if you want a one night thing. Oh, can we meet this? Pi-? It's, it's funny to start with. Yeah. Um, doesn't remain like that though. So I, I thought it would be very lighthearted, but I was not expecting what we got. So, um, I guess there, there's a lot of characters in this, but there's really two main characters, uh, Christian and Al Bailey, the filmmaker. So what did you think of Christian? Um, hmm, interesting. Uh, seems like a, well, I mean, obviously a smart guy. I mean, he's a professional commercial airline pilot. Um, can't be a dummy and do that. Uh, and uh, But you quickly get the sense that Christian is kind of living in the fray let's say like he's <laughs> he, he's 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 not a good place in his life and i think it's hard to judge somebody uh, totally on that uh, but the the christian we meet is i don't know if it's not it's not somebody i would necessarily want to be hanging around with to be honest with you <laughs> you know that's funny like the very last thing that you say i agree with 100 percent, and it sounds like you almost feel for him i do uh, yeah no i i think that i think that's a troubled guy i think that's a guy with some with some with some big issues and yeah that's it, yeah I, yeah I, I i do feel kind of sorry for him you, you know it's funny I, I guess i'm a little more or a little less uh um in uh, a little more um, heartless than you are because well, I was immediately turned off by the character and I just understanding his situation like understanding he's a widower um, says he's looking for love obviously isn't <laughs> has something else entirely in mind uh, he's a pretty horrible person yeah. and I could never get past some of the things that he said and then I just yeah. that empathy like, I can see if he wasn't so over the top 
sure. empathy would be there. I, but. I'm not condoning any of his behavior. Oh, no, I, no. Yeah. yeah, in any way. But yeah, yeah, sure. I, I completely understand why you would have a hard time. <laughs> He's a, and but I agree with you. Not someone I would want to spend too much time with. <laughs> nah. nah. So um, Al Bailey is the filmmaker who's been follows him around for a year and a half, which is hard to believe. Yeah, and you know we'll, we'll get into that. You know, but, um, so what did you think of Al Bailey? Al, Al Bailey, uh, Alan Bailey, uh, seems honestly seems like a genuine good guy. Um, I, I thought he was. If it wasn't for Al Bailey, um, kind of being the consciousness of this thing and like you can kind of see his thought process from start to finish change and uh if he wasn't likable this would have been really tough to watch um but he's a super likable guy and you're totally rooting for him to to be able to turn this thing around and get what he wants and and man i i can only imagine the pressure you have you have other people's money you're supposed to be making this one thing you you're not getting the ingredients to make the meal you know that you that you were supposed to and now you have to improvise what a tough position he was in a very tough position and you're right if it wasn't for him being so likable and he's not like extremely like a he's not on a different level of like he's not that he doesn't have that infectious infectious likability no he's just a normal dude who's trying to do good yeah Uh, and you really buy into it really quick he's having fun in the beginning he really is and he's the reason he's even doing the film is because he kind of he feels as he sees his friend is trying to find love, so he thinks, "Cool, that'd be kind of a neat documentary," and it would be. Um, I, I liked him. <laughs> I think he makes some very interesting decisions, so and uh, I, yeah. I, I do understand the pressure. And I, we see a phone call very early in where they're telling him, "Like, okay, you got like five minutes of footage. You got a, you got a lot of money riding on this, so you better do something." So yeah, the pressure's there, and he's the person I felt empathy for, actually. Yeah. Oh, one hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. But there's a, I don't know. There's a, there's an instance where I kind of feel like, okay, he definitely understands what's happening, and it's not. Well, the Vegas trip I thought was like that was an egg on, you know. That was almost like, hey, let's go to Vegas. This is definitely going to be some footage. You know, we're definitely going to get some footage out of this. And I don't know if that was, you know, that, that's not a great decision to make. <laughs> that, that's exactly what I was thinking of. And that kind of leads to a question that I had. Um, it almost seems like parts of this were, now, I, I don't think anything was staged. I think it was right. okay. genuine. Yeah. But you said, actually, you said it perfectly. It was egged on. It was almost scripted. It, was, it wasn't scripted. It was planned. Right. Like, right. Like, those parts of the like well, how did that make you feel because that really took me out of it totally yeah no that that was the kind of the turning point in the in the movie for me um at, at first i was like okay well they're they're <laughs> they're now they're along for a ride that moment felt like okay we know fucking christian's a fucking lunatic we know it's gonna be fucking madness and you know the footage you get is you know al bailey's tying one on you know and then yeah. like we're we're lead to believe we're led to believe that like the next day it's like, Hey, like what the fuck? Like, I got wasted and, and you're a dick now. It's like, dude, that like, th- I just watched the footage. Like there, there was you didn't try to slow anything down. There was no breaks on that night of partying. Right. And, and that's, well, I mean, let's just say it. And that's kind of what it, this documentary is, is the, the documented partying of a foreign European airline pilot. <laughs> It's uh, it's like one of those '80s late night Skinamax movies, <laughs> except it's real life. It, yeah. it, it's and it's way over the top, and it's pretty disgusting actually with some of the things this guy says. But you're right; it's a it's a party movie. It's just yeah. not a good party. It's one of those no. parties you you keep asking people like, "Can I go? Can I go?" But you're not the one who drove. Yeah, so you're like stuck there watching all these drunk assholes. <laughs> It's like you've definitely, if you've been to Las Vegas, like you've definitely seen like the group of guys that are like falling all over themselves outside, f- leaving the casino, and you're literally like, okay, let's walk the other way because well, I don't want to be anywhere near these guys. Exactly. That's this guy 24 7. Exactly. And a hundredfold. <laughs> yes. Yes. It is nuts. So, kind of going along with him, you know leading on the the Vegas trip, did you ever think there was a point where Al Bailey should have like pumped the brakes on it and said like, okay, 
we have to stop. Yeah, I, I think that was the. I think you know if they if they were trying to get you to. I don't know. I don't know what they were trying to get you to feel at, in that Vegas segment, but um, yeah, after that, I was like, okay, well, this is, you know, it's just like you can you can see the guy, and I guess that's where my a lot of my sympathy and empathy comes from for Christian in particular is like he's he's an addict, like in a lot of ways. You know, he's an alcoholic. Yes. You know, he's he's doing drugs, um, sex addict, obviously, and you know, there is no, it's. There's no, there's no attempt to help him. They don't say, "Hey, you know what? We scheduled this meeting with like this counselor." No, they go do VR sex, you know, <laughs> you know, and it's like there, almost at every point you could have done something, and maybe you actually do try to help him, and maybe that's an interesting documentary. They don't do that, and yeah, there there was definitely a moment when the the plug could could have been pulled. And you know, that's funny. That's kind of uh they interview people saying they interview like a talking heads type of thing like hey if a person's doing this what do you think and then you know the person's like oh that means they have signs of addiction but they never get him to get, like they never actually get him the help and i thought that was very disappointing and frustrating and it kind of ruined a lot of the the now there's a lot of things going on in this documentary it can be like you said it could be about getting someone help it can just be a documentary about how i can't get this documentary made right it can be about addiction. It can straight up be about dating and Tinder and things like that. But I don't know. I I don't think any of that came together at all. Like, was there anything that appealed to you during this? Oh, you know, like it was kind of like watching a train wreck, right? Like so you can't peel your eyes away. And like, I guess that was the only appeal. Is that a good thing? I don't think so. Right. And, and yeah, go ahead. No, I was going to say, you're right. The only thing that kept me watching was, what is this guy going to do next? Yeah, and that's not, that's like watching a Steve-O, like the old Steve-O. Like, oh, I, I know this guy's going to hurt himself. Right. In which way is he going to hurt himself, and am, am I going to laugh at that? Like, I don't know. At some point, like, I I never thought it was funny. You know, there there wasn't a part of me that was like, wow, wow, look at what fun this fucking guy's having. Or, you know, like, at no point did I think it was fun or funny. And it was kind of reprehensible and on a lot of levels, like it was just pure voyeurism in a, the worst way. Exactly. So that was actually one of my, that's exactly what I think. I, I it was pretty much reality TV yeah. on a big scale. So where do you draw the line between entertaining, um, interesting and just to, uh, you're a horror fan too. And you yeah. don't like all horror. You do draw a line. So yeah. like, where do you draw the line in like a documentary or or in this kind of story? Uh, when when the when the when the subject of your documentary is like obviously a, in trouble, like and I say that knowing people that are, are addicts and have you know alcoholics and and like even some of my own personal stuff, I I can see how you know this. I felt like it was taking advantage of this person's problems. And right. that's where it ceases to become entertainment. Like I, th I did text you. I was like, "Yeah, it was entertaining." And I've kind of, I've kind of, I feel, I don't feel that way anymore. Like I was, I couldn't, like I said, I couldn't take my eyes away from it. I, I wanted to see what the next disaster was, right? But it didn't make me feel good. Like, and in as I've thought more about it, like what did I tell you? That was fucked up. You know, it, it was, it was, and I don't feel, I don't feel good about this person. I don't feel good about what I saw, and. You know, I really do hope the guy found help. <laughs> well, ultimately, I think that's why I kept watching because yeah. things are getting worse and worse and worse. Or maybe he's just revealing his true self because it doesn't really get worse. He's just they're just kind of getting to know him better. Yeah, I mean, it's him. He, it's not. Uh, it's not a slow descent. <laughs> he just falls right off that cliff. So, yeah, I, I kept think, waiting for I guess some sort of closure to it. And you're right. You feel kind of. I mean, we've talked a lot about Henry Portrait of Silic Serial Killer. We talk about feeling dirty. I yeah. felt, like, pretty disgusted watching it. it. It was a different sense of it, but at the end, I was kind of like, what the hell did I just watch? Yeah, and, like, I, ultimately, I was like, what was the point of that? I mean, is it to gawk? Exactly, and that actually was my question. Like, what do you think was the point of it? It's not educational. It's not informational. Entertaining would be the opt, but I, it, like you said, it's not funny. It's not fun. It's not redemptive. It's not inspirational. 
I don't know what the point of it was. <laughs> I don't either. And I, and maybe that's not the fault necessarily of Al Bailey. You know, I, I think he he tried to make fucking, you know, lemonade out of, you know, lemons. And... He, yeah, like, I mean, I, from the beginning, I, I've said, like, uh, that dude, Yeo Min's work, that guy, he oh. tried so hard yeah. to turn this around. And in the beginning, it was obvious the point was to do something fun. Yeah. It was to entertain, maybe, you know, get into a little bit of the Tinder lifestyle, but probably poke some fun at it. He, he was going to have fun with it. And he tried to roll with the punches. And honestly, I think he kind of just threw up his hands in the middle. And when he, I mean, there's parts where he's obviously disgusted. Oh, I, I, if he feigned any of that disgust, he's a great actor. Because yeah, he, he's, he, he's, 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 he's he really in front of the camera, right now. Yeah, <laughs> correct, correct. And you know, you do. You know, you watch a you watch a relationship change, kind of before your eyes between these two friends, and uh, you know, and it was so. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't know what the point was. I, I'm left scratching my head. Like there, there are a lot of documentaries that I think it made like this, where you, you. They don't like the one we watched about the the woman with the the child that she adopts. And, oh right, right, right. Or, like, is it anything close to this? No, but like we kind of reached the same conclusion. We were like, well, who was that for? What was that for? Yeah, that's um, a very good point. Yeah, and you know, is it entertaining? I don't know. I don't. I, you know, maybe to some people this is entertaining, and you like maybe you do love to like really gawk at like you know, inter- you watch those intervention shows, and you love to see people fucking struggling or something. I don't know. That's actually a really good point. This might be the perfect documentary for this generation. And I don't mean young people. I mean people who watch, uh, who are into reality television, YouTube, um, Vine clips and prank stuff and all that good stuff. It, yeah. This might be that documentary for them. It might capture that moment because it, it just didn't work for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, me neither. I, I just don't understand why they ended up releasing it as it was. Is I'm thinking the idea was here's our documentary about a failed documentary. Yeah, yeah. And, I think you're right. I think I think yeah. Because uh, I mean, right. We're not going to spoil anything, but yes, the the end of the film, you're left going like, wow, that this is what they this is what they ended up with, you know. Oh, and so like I actually wanted to bring this up. So there was little intermittent clips of who I think was a pilot and his son. Or something that they were interviewing. Yeah, it seemed right. much like much afterwards. Yes, you know? yes, yes. Um, I, well, that's the feeling I got. Also, yeah. that's right. I was like, I, I guess they were out of time and money. But I was like, th- now this guy seems interesting. This guy seems like someone I would like. Maybe it's maybe it's a documentary about a a a, a pilot dad who's raising a young son. Like, okay, or young daughter, whatever it was. Um, I, I think that sounds interesting. I, I wish that was something. I maybe make it thirty minutes or something on YouTube. I would have watched that. You know, yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, it, it went on a little long, and you're right. Like it did have a feeling of they were just kind of filling space in, in a lot of moments. Space. But some like good stuff. You're like, oh wow, look at this like nice person. And, like he's, <laughs> he's got a nice life. Wow. I know, right? It was, that was very odd. Yeah. So, uh, final thoughts on DTF. Um, it is out on a uh, video on demand right now, but we'll use our same. It would is it an opening night rental? Do you wait to stream this? Completely ignore it. Um, I completely ignore it. Uh, I'm not, I, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, Al Bailey, you, you, as Pat said, you tried and you tried and you tried. Uh, I don't think you get a story that you're going to feel good about um, in any way. <laughs> and uh, there's a lot of better ways to spend another hour and, a, hour and a half of your day. So pass on that. I completely agree with you. This is kind of like you mentioned uh, that other documentary I've seen, but much like Watchlist, um, which had a lot of good performances and shots, this has a director who tried his damnedest, and at the end, just not very entertaining. I mean, technically was, well done. Yeah, technically. yeah, technically well done. He tries them. Camera work is fine. Um, there's an interesting documentary. There's a few interesting documentaries in here, mm. but um, this particular one. <laughs> It just doesn't work. It's a complete pass. You're going to feel, you're going to go in thinking this is, it's one thing. Nothing wrong with things changing up on you, but you're going to come out feeling like crap. Yeah. You need like antibacterial wipes to like clean this movie off of you. And that's what happens when you meet someone who's DTF. <laughs> <laughs> so every week you can find us here on YouTube with Adventures in Movies Looks at dot, dot, dot. Hey, we're down, we're uh, DTF. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> down to film. Down to film. <laughs> We're down to film. Uh, we got horror, comedy, documentaries. Uh, oh gosh, we do everything. Everything. So in the comments, let us know. Let us know that we are not doing the right thing. So you tell us what you want us to do. Um, next week, we'll probably have another documentary. I just want to give a heads up in October, we're going all horror, all horror all the time. Yes. Oh, uh, hopefully, Danny will be there for us. Thank you very much. Danny will tell you to like and subscribe. So I'm letting you know like and subscribe. <laughs> Adios, everybody. <laughs>